Hello everybody, welcome back to Gaming Accessibly with Mike every day and to our Zombie Exodus Safe Haven coverage, episode 4. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off, and let's go. I think my teams are doing pretty good here. Let's continue to even out our teams so that we have equal number of melee, short range, long range, overwatch, and heavy weaponry. Thank you very much to my noise BBA. Baseball bat. Oh, Volume. Seating rate. 100. 90. 75%. 70%. Text selection. Lines. Team 1. Words. Characters. Edit. New line. Selected. Characters. Edit. Vertical navigate. Form controls. Links. Headings. Benji. Machete. Billy. Team 1. You order Nathan to the highway team. No problem. He nods and walks over to the original team. Let's review our teams in my head. See what we have. Team 1. Highway. 7. Team 1. We got 7. Bailey, baseball bat. Bailey with a baseball bat. Benji, machete. Benji with a machete. Driver, Cold Python revolver. Driver. Jillian, Glock 19 pistol. Jillian. Lopez, M4 carbine and M9 pistol. Lopez. Madison, AR-15. Madison. Nathan, shotgun. Nathan with a shotgun. Team 2, field, 5. All right, team 2 has... Brody, lacrosse stick. Grody with a lacrosse stick. Church, Cold Python revolver. Um. Brody, lacrosse stick. Team two, field, five. Brody, lacrosse stick. Look, we're missing a little melee here. Let me read. Church, Cold Python revolver. Dante, Glock 19 pistol. Kelly, cleaver. Oh, there's a cleaver. All right, cleaver. We got a lacrosse stick and a cleaver for melee. Nora, 38 special. Nora with a weapon. Unassigned seven. All right, um, this team, we need to add a little bit more. I think we could add a little bit more handguns. Nora, 38, Kelly, Cleaver, Dante, Church, Brody, Lacrosse Stick. Church, Cold Python Revolver. Dante, Glock 19 Pistol. Kelly, Cleaver. Nora, 38 Special. Unassigned 7. Yeah, we need one more pistol and I think a shotgun and a rifle for overwatch Nora Kelly Dante Church Brody team 2 Fee Nathan shotgun Madison AR-15 Lopez M4 carbine and M9 pistol Jillian Glock 19 pistol driver Cold Python revolver Benji machete Billy baseball bat team 1 highway 7 actually we only have three pistol users but what one person with an extra weapon so maybe just three pistol users on team two would be necessary. Billy, Benji, Driver, Jillian, Glock, Lopez, M4, Madison, AR, Nathan, team two, field, five, Brody, lacrosse stick, church, cold python revolver, Dante, Glock 19 pistol, Kelly, Cleaver, Nora, 38 special. Okay, that's three pistol users. Unassigned seven. So we need a shotgun and a rifle. Jamie, FN90, Parker, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9, Parker, Jamie, FN90, unassigned 7. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. Parker, knife. Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Parker, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. I think this could be... Parker, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Rachel could be a good combination. Two weapons, which evens out a little bit. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps is .50 caliber machine gun. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. And then Riley can be the shotgun. Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol. Riley, shot, Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol. Woody, Winchester Model 94 rifle. Woody could also be put on this team too for a rifle. Looking over the teams, you assigned to team one. Woody, Winchester Model, looking over the teams. Jamie, radio button, check, one of eight. Looking over the teams, you assigned to team one. Woody, Winchester Model 94, looking over the teams, you assigned to team one. Jamie, radio button, check, one of eight. 
we're already set to assign to team one. I think we should get team two under control. A little short on team two. Parker, radio button, Rachel, radio button, uncheck, three of eight, Riley, Rosie, Tommy, radio, Woody, radio, on second thought, I don't assign anyone, radio button, uncheck, eight of eight, check, next, button, team one, highway, seven, Billy, baseball bat, Benji, driver, Jillian, Gl Lopez, M Madison, AR, Nathan, shotgun, team two, field, five, Brody, lacrosse stick, church, cold python revolver, Dante, Glock 19 pistol, Kelly, cleaver, Nora, 38 special, unassigned seven, Jamie, FN90 submachine gun, Parker, knife. Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Rosie, bandit jeeps this point. Riley, shotgun and Glock 9. Tommy, M4 carbine and M. Woody, Winchester model 9. Looking over the teams. You, assigned to team 1. Radio button, check. Assigned to team 2. Radio button, uncheck. 2 of 4. Check. Unassign a survivor from a team. Radio button, uncheck. Clear the teams. Radio, next, button. You assign. Jamie, radio button, check. 1 of 8. Parker, radio button, uncheck. 2 of 8. Jamie, Parker, radio button, uncheck. Two of Rachel, radio button, uncheck. Three of eight. Let's assign Rachel to team two. Check. Riley, Rosie, radio button, uncheck. Tommy, Woody, radio, on second thought. I don't assign it. Next, button. Jamie, you order Rachel to the field team. She goes without hesitation. Team one, highway, seven. Billy, baseball bat. Benji, Michelle, driver. Jillian, Glock 19, Lopez, M4 carbine and M9 pistol. Madison, AR-15. Nathan, shotgun. Team two, field, six. Brody, lacrosse stick. Church, cold python revolver. Dante, Glock 19 pistol. Kelly, cleaver. Nora, 38 special. Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Nora, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Unassigned six. All right, one more person to team two. We will put a shotgun user for area of effect, burst. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. Parker, knife. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps 6.50 caliber machine gun. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps 6. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. Think Riley would be a good choice. Tommy, M4 car. Woody, Winchester Mo Looking over the teams. You assigned to team two. Jamie, radio bu Parker, radio button. Riley, radio button. Uncheck. Three Let's of seven. Put Riley. Check. Rosie, Tommy, Woody, radio. On second thought. I don't just Next. Button. You order Riley to the field team. You got it. He says and strides over. Team one, highway, seven. Billy, baseball bat, Benji, driver, Jillian, Glock 19 pistol. All right, now let's go ahead and add a couple more folks to team two. We got a pretty balanced lot. Let's add a couple more. We're looking good now. I think team two is probably a little stronger than team one now, but let's put a little bit more on it. Lopez, M4 car, Madison, AR, Nathan, shot, team two, field, seven. Brody, lacrosse stick, church, cold python revolver. Dante, Glock 19 pistol. Kelly, Cleaver. Nora, 38 special. Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. Unassigned 5. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. We'll do the large guns last. Parker, knife. Yeah, we'll go ahead and assign um, a knife user. Maybe. Yeah. Jamie, FN90, Parker, knife. Rosie, Bandit G, Tommy, M4 Carbine, Woody, Winchester, looking over the teams. You assigned to Team 2. Jamie, radio button, check. Parker, radio button, uncheck. Let's two put of six. Parker, because it doesn't really matter. Rosie, R Tommy, Woody, on second thought. Next, button. You order Parker to the field team. Alrighty, he says and strolls over to where you pointed him to go. Team 1, Highway, 7. Billy, Baseball, Benji, M Driver, Jillian, Lopez, Madison, A, Nathan, Shotgun, Team 2, Field, 8. Brody, Le Church, Co Dante, Glock, Kelly, Co Nora, 38, Parker, Knife, Rachel, MP5, Riley, Shotgun and Glock, Unassigned 4, Jamie, FN90 Submachine Gun. Okay, now we have it even. So two and two. One team's going to have one extra. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps 6.50 caliber machine gun. Tommy, M4 Carbine and M1911 pistol. Woody, Winchester Model 94 rifle. Okay, put Woody. Woody's going to go ahead on field team. Looking over the teams. You assigned to team. Jamie, radio button, Rosie, radio button, Tommy, radio button, Woody, radio button, unchecked, four of five, check. On second thought, next, button. You order Woody to the field team. All right, now, let's put one more heavy, let's put a heavy machine gun user on the field team, then the rest will go on the forest team. Woody smiles and whistles, team one, highway, seven, Billy, baseball bat, 
Benji, Machete, Driver, Jillian, Glock, Lopez, M4 Carba, Madison, AR-15, Nathan, Shotgun, Team 2, Field, 9, Brody, Lacrosse Stick, Church, Cold Python, Dante, Glock 19 Pistol, Kelly, Click, Nora, 38 Special, Parker, Knife, Rachel, MP5 Submachine Gun, Riley, Shotgun and Glock 19 Pistol, Woody, Winchester Model 94 Rifle, Unassigned 3, Jamie, FN90 Submachine Gun, Rosie, Bandit Jeeps' .50 caliber machine gun. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps' .50 caliber machine gun. Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps' .50 caliber machine gun. Okay, let's go for that. Jamie, Rosie, Bandit Jeeps' .50 caliber machine Rosie gun. Rosie will be on that team. Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911, looking over the teams. USA, Jamie, radio, Rosie, radio button, uncheck. Check. Rosie will be on their team. That should be good. Tommy, on second thought, next, button. You order Rosie to the field team. Ain't Jack gonna put me with driver? Rosie asks. Okay, Rosie, that makes sense. Go ahead and join driver's team. Radio button, check, one of two. I don't know. With driver, those two like to work together. No, Rosie, join the team I assigned. Radio button, uncheck, two of two. Eh, you need to just follow my instructions. Okay, no, Rosie, join the team eyes. Check. Next, button. Lopez, she nods with a dejected look and strides over to the originally assigned team. Team one, highway, seven. Bailey, baseball bat. Benji, Michelle, driver, cold python, Jillian, Glock 19, pistol. Lopez, M4 carbine and M9 pistol. Madison, AR-15. Nathan, shotgun. Team two, field, ten. Brody, lacrosse stick, team two, field, ten. Brody, lacrosse stick, church, cold python, re Dante, Glock 19 pistol, Kelly, cleaver, Nora, 38 special, Parker, knife, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol, Rosie, bandit jeeps, .50 caliber machine gun, Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol, Woody, Winchester model 94 rifle, unassigned two, Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put the last two on the other team. Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911, looking over the team, Jamie, radio button, Tommy, on second thought, next, button, next, button, on second thought, I don't assign anyone. On second thought, I don't assign anyone. Radio button, unchecked. Three of three. Check. Next. Next. Button. Unchecked. Clear the teams. Rate. Next. Button. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. Woody, Winchester, unassigned two. Jamie, FN9, Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911. Dante, Glock 19 pistol. Team two, field. Brody, lacrosse stick. Team two, Nathan, shotgun. Madison, AR, Lopez, M4 carbine and M. Nathan, team two, field. Brody, lacrosse stick. Church, cold python reef. Dante, Glock 19, Kelly, Cleaver. Nora, 38 special. Parker, knife. Rachel, MP5, Rosie, Bandit G, Riley, Shotgun, and Woody, Winchester, Mo Unassigned 2. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun, Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol, looking over the teams, you. Assigned to team 1, radio button, check, 1 of 4. Assigned to team 2, radio button, uncheck, 2 of 4. Unassign a survivor from a, unassign a survivor from a team, clear the teams, radio, next, button, next, button. You assign. Jamie, radio button, check, 1 of 3. Tommy, radio button, uncheck, 2 right, of 3. put Jamie on team 1. On second thought, I don't assign anyone. Next, button. Jamie, you order Jamie to the highway team. Okay, highway team. You got it. He says and walks over to his team. Team one, highway, eight. Bailey, baseball bat. Benji, machete. Driver, cold python revolver. Jamie, FN90 submachine gun. Jillian, Glock 19 pistol. Lopez, M4 carbine and M9 pistol. Madison, AR-15. Nathan, shotgun. Team two, field, 10. Brody, lacrosse stick. Church, cold python. Dante, Glock, Kelly, cleaver. Nora, 38, Parker, knife. Rachel, MP5 submission, Rosie, Bandit Jeeps is .50, Riley, Shotgun and Glock 19 pistol, Woody, Winchester Model 94 rifle, unassigned one, Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol, looking over the teams, you assigned to team one, Tommy, radio button, check, one of All two. Alright, Tommy will be the last one and we're done, finally, took a while, but I got it all under control. On second thought, I don't, next, button, next, but, on second thought, next, button, check. Field team, radio button, uncheck, two of two. He nods and walks with quick, deliberate steps to the team spot. Team one, highway, nine. Bailey, baseball bat, Benji, machete, driver, cold python revolver, Jamie, FN90 submachine gun, Jillian, Glock 19 pistol, Lopez, M4 carbine and M9 pistol, Madison, AR-15, Nathan, shotgun, Tommy, M4 carbine and M1911 pistol. Team two, field, ten. Brody, lacrosse stick, church, cold python revolver, Dante, Glock 19 pistol, Kelly, cleaver, Nora, 38 special, Parker, knife, Rachel, MP5 submachine gun and M9 pistol. Rosie, Bandit Jeeps' .50 caliber machine gun. Riley, shotgun and Glock 19 pistol. Woody, Winchester Model 94 rifle. With all teams formed and preparing, you join the highway team. Radio button, check, right. one of two. 
I think I need to balance it out one more way. I think I will join the highway team. We should be fine. Highway team. Field team. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of two. Highway team. Radio button. Check. One of two. Yeah, I'll join the highway team. Field team. Next. Button. You join the team ahead of the accident to intercept the mob of infected. Before the battle begins, you take a quick look at your currently equipped weapons. Sledgehammer and baseball bat. Sledgehammer and baseball bat. I think we will be the melee that balances out everything. Keep these weapons as primary and backup. Radio button. Check. One of two. I think we should maybe switch the baseball bat with the gun, but I think I like being melee. Choose new weapons. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of two. Keep these weapons as primary and backup. Radio button. Check. One. Choose new. Next. Button. Next. We'll keep button. those two. You sir, as the few zombies who leave the pack spot the living, they charge over the dark road, riling those behind from their wandering days. Their screeching cries reach your team, who show a mix of anxiousness and confidence. <laughs> spread out and wait until they're in range, you shout. Fire when ready. Those without guns need to kill any that get too close. All right, everybody, spread out. Watch your field of fire. When they get close, melee teams, take them down quickly. Hit the head, bash the head through. Do not let them scratch or bite you. Those of you at medium range, pick your targets carefully. Aim for headshots, but if you can't make the shot, put it in her chest, center mass, and then finish them off. Those of you in melee, do not go in front of the field of fire. I repeat, do not walk in front of any folks with guns. Those of you with heavy weaponry, you're going to hit from a distance. And those of you with rifles, I want you saving your bullets for Overwatch. Anybody that looks like they're about to get hit, if you got a clear shot and you got a clear field of fire, take them down. But be careful. Everybody look out for crossfire. Shotgun users, make sure you double check your field of fire. We don't want any stray bullets hitting anybody. Folks, let's not hurt each other out there. Let's be careful. Everybody clear? Yeah. All right, let's go. You survey your teammates as they prepare for battle. With his M4 carbine raised, Tommy takes a spot next to you. Beside you, Jillian holds up her pistol and sucks in deep, anxious breaths. <sighs> let's go. On the far right side of the line, Bailey waits with a baseball bat, which she holds in a perfect stance like she's been swinging it all her life, while Benji stands on the far left holding a machete, his eyes wide and face flushed with sweat. The zombies let out a tremendous, primal howl as they advance to 50 yards and spot your team. The unified growl calls from the pack, and they break into an agitated run. Here they come. Jamie hollers as he racks the bolt on his submachine gun, while Madison raises a rifle. As the infected approach, you choose a weapon. Use my sledgehammer. Radio button. Check. One of two. I'll use my sledgehammer. Smash those brains in. Use my baseball bat. Radio button. Uncheck. Two. Next. Button. Next. Button. With a sudden crackle of gunfire, your team attacks. Bloody ribbons fly from the first few zombies, and they flock to the ground and ride in the fleeting end of animated life. More calm, and the next barrage of bullets takes them down. Madison's rifle rings out, and the undead topple from precise holes in their foreheads. Driver looks on at the rushing pack, his face a surface of calm water as he rocks from side to side. As the first of the infected escapes the flurry of gunfire, you surge forward and slam the sledgehammer on the top of its head. Diseased brain spills from the wound, and red eyes flare and roll back. As she falls, another zombie reaches the line, and in one swift motion, you twirl the weapon and swing it in an arc, smashing his forehead. Fragments of bone fly off as the infected crumbles to the highway. Infected after infected come, and each drops to the fury of your sledgehammer, until a pile of corpses lies at your feet. <laughs> Who's going to kill more infected? Game, you or Madison? Jamie shouts as he targets a far-off zombie. Yeah, I was gonna kill more! Jillian's pistol clicks empty, and she drops behind the line of survivors, staring at her now useless weapon. I'm out! Here, Tommy says and tosses her a new pistol, which she fumbles as she catches. Here, catch this! With the infected pouring across the Thank highway, you. your team fights on. They fight because there's no other way. Orderless and primal like the creatures against them. Their uncoordinated attacks show lack of experience and discipline, and maybe a lack of unity they'll need to find if they hope to live in the new world. Maybe their movements are sluggish because of how weary they've become, both in mind and body. They only stand into battle because of their sense of knowing the stakes involved. Weeks ago, they lived quiet lives, and now they're forced to battle the monsters of the new world. Their spirits reflect their hope to survive this ordeal, but they can't take much more of this. With the constant stream of zombies, you defend your team with your sledgehammer. More calm, and you backtrack towards the crash side. Very impressive. Game. You have a knack for this. Driver says and scratches his beard with the smoking barrel of his revolver. Man, game. Nice sledgehammer work. A cloud of gun smoke fogs the highway, and corpses litter the surface as the rest of the undead step over the fallen, relentless in their hunt. You thin the herd, and only a few stragglers remain, shuffling towards your team of survivors. I'm out of ammo. Nathan calls out. Three lie dead to his shotgun, which he tosses to the ground before drawing a pistol. I'm out! Lopez lowers his rifle to his side and switches magazines. Down to my last mag. 
Reload. Save your ammo, you shot as the last few infected close in on your team. They fall like the rest of their horde. Save your ammo. We'll take them in melee. Melee force. Force up. Melee force. Force up. Range. Short range. Back off. Save your ammo. Bailey lashes out with her blood covered baseball bat and cracks a zombie on the cap of his car. He drops to the highway beside the four other sheep. <laughs> and she surveys her work with a proud smile. <laughs> we did it. Nathan yells and pats Benji on the back. Oh, right. we expression. got him! Madison swings her rifle over her shoulder and yells. Did you see how many I got? Did you see it? I killed so many. Driver steps up to the corpse of an infected he killed and crouches beside it. His lips move like he's speaking in a low whisper, and he chuckles and moves his hands and gestures to support his speech. The howls of the undead call from across the crash site, cutting your team's celebration short. Looking over, you watch the field team falling back to the caravan, followed by the horde. They need our help. Let's go, you say, and your team joins the other group. Field team's in trouble. Everybody, fall back to support them. Your team reaches the crash site to rejoin the rest of the survivors. As you make it to your bandit jeep, you spot a black Bentley luxury car rolling along the road towards your group. Its tinted windows hide any passengers, but as it closes in on the impassable blockade, the driver's side window rolls down and the woman leans out. Need help, she shouts as the motor cuts. Y'all need help! She has light, almost white, inch long hair, and waves her hand excitedly, like you're a long lost relative. She leaps from the car, dragging a shotgun out. Hi, name's Gina, the fair haired woman says, walking towards you. I heard gunfire from just a short stretch away and saw you fighting the dead. If you need a hand with. Hey, I'm Gina. Y'all need help? Next, button. Next, button. That we gotta decide now. Church yells as he opens the door of his Cadillac. I say we all drive off. If the supply truck don't work, we can leave it. We gotta decide now. Church yells as he opens the door of his Cadillac. I say we all drive off. If the supply truck don't work, we can leave it. If we go, we're leaving a lot of our supplies. Jamie marches up, drinks the entire contents of a bottle of water, and wipes his sweaty brow with his arm. Whatever you choose to do, I want to help. Gina says to the group. She slides shells into her shotgun as she speaks. I can help. I say we get out of here. We should just run. We can't leave all our supplies behind, Church. We can find new supplies if we're alive, Church says, his eyes bulging. We can find new supplies. Lord knows we can't do this forever. Bailey runs up from the camper, cleaning blood off her baseball bat with a scrap <sighs> of cloth patterned with balloons and kittens, a baby's kid. <sighs> what if we go up that hill over there? It's steep. So How the about that hill? To follow. We can defend it. A long whale cuts her off. You glance back to the field, which the dead have nearly crossed. <laughs> the numbers never seem to end. <laughs> My mom will never climb that hill. Riley shouts. We're leaving. My mom can't climb that hill. She's too old. That hill is a great idea, actually, Rachel says, approaching from her group's vehicle. She has a different weapon in hand now, a high-powered rifle. Too many remain to fight in the open. We need high ground. We can take the high ground. We can put them down. Next, button. Next, but that hill is a great idea. Next, button. That hill is, my mom will never climb that hill. A long whale cuts her off. Bailey runs up from the camper. We can find new supplies, whatever you choose to do. I want to help. Gina says to the group. She if we go, we're leaving a lot of our supplies. We gotta decide now. Church yells as he opens the door of his cattle. Show stats, button. We got it. If we, whatever you choose to do, we can find news. Bailey runs up from the camp. A long whale cuts her off. My mom will never climb that hill. That hill is a great idea. Next, button. As, look, we don't have time for this. Benji shouts, the muscles in his neck bulging. We need to go now. The infected are right there. We need to go now. We're in trouble. In a sudden burst of motion, Brody sprints a few yards up the hill. We can make it up to the top with no problem. It won't even be that hard. We can help one another. Heck, I'll carry people on my back. Let's go up to the hill. I can carry a few of you. Who needs help? Nora? No one is dying, Tommy says, his arm shaking as he holds his carbine. I'll make sure everyone gets to safety. I don't want anybody dying. We're going to do this. Lopez's carbine barks out fires a few zombies round the caravan, while Dante climbs onto the hood of the car and spears one of their heads with a twisted pole from the wreckage. <laughs> we elected a leader to limit this kind of rigmarole. Make up your mind already, Woody says, slapping the back of a disabled car. Make up your mind. We have a leader. Everybody, follow the leader. As you listen to the survivors argue and talk over one another, you prepare to issue your next order as the new leader. Climbing the hill is the only option. With the steep rise, the zombie horde will struggle to follow, though your own companions may find ascending just as challenging. If your group makes it, those survivors with loaded firearms can kill the infected. Some of the group will need to defend the hill, while others will have to climb up and scout the summit. Right now, you're assuming the top of the hill is safe. Plus, everyone is exhausted and resources are fading. Keeping too many below to fight the infected wastes energy and ammunition. As the group scrambles to deal with the coming horde, you dash to the front of the caravan and raise your arms to call attention. Everyone, get your asses up that hill. If you don't move, you're dead. So you better climb fast. Shoot any zombies who follow, or they'll rip us apart. Move it. The survivors move towards the hill, though they show apprehension and worry. Next, button. Everybody, we're going up the hill. Move yourself now. Next, button. Parker, as the survivors break from the caravan for the bottom of the hill, the infected packs combine at the edge of the highway into one horde. Their moans turn to growls, and more decayed bodies rush ahead and weave through the vehicles and wreckage. Under the blaze of the morning sun in the clear Colorado sky, the chemical smell of burnt grease mixes with the stench of rock. The hill rises to the west, so steep you can't see the top, and the dense clumps of spruce and pine stand maze light. <laughs> Benji and Nathan are first up the 50 yards low, maneuvering through the low branches and clearing a path for the others. Jillian follows close behind them, helping clear away broken branches and loose stones. Rachel, Driver, Rosie, Tommy, Gina, and Jamie fire down at the undead ahead of the mob, giving time for the rest of the survivors to start up the incline. Since the highway team killed off most of their zombies, the combined horde poses less of a challenge than it could have. 
Let's go. Ma. Riley shouts over the clamor of the infected. He holds her under one arm and leads her with careful steps up the rise. The woman's face shows her struggle, and she digs her cane into the loose dirt as her feet shuffle along the cleared path. I'm trying, Riley, she says in a shaky voice. Parker and Kelly maneuver up the incline, while Brody and Madison rush ahead through a thicker part of the forested hill. Where are you two going? Nathan yells to the twins as he rips a branch down from a tree. Scouting the top of the hill, Brody says, there could be zombies up there. The horde flows through the caravan like river water around stones. They ignore the vehicles and focus on the sight and scent and sounds of the living, drawn by an unseen force to bite and infect. Their faces bear the marks of decay, and those in front show teeth as they bark in primal madness, while those behind follow in a languid parade of death. They move towards your group with no thoughts of their own but pulled by the gathering until it's their turn for a taste of flesh. The crack, pop, and boom of gunfire rips through the forest in sonic waves, and the bodies of the first few undead fall to the dirt and tumble down the incline, dragging those behind them. At the base of the hill, Billy, Lopez, Dante, Church, and Woody fight back the zombies making the incline. As the zombie horde swarms the bottom of the hill, you consider the possible actions you can take. You could join the team defending the hill, helping to kill off the horde and giving time for the non-fighters of the group to climb the hill, or you can rally them to fight, inspiring and actively leading them in order to increase their morale. You could help clear a path to the top, which would allow the others to reach it faster. You gaze across the hill at Riley and Nora. While he helps her up the hill, your group loses a capable fighter. The faster she makes it up the hill, the sooner Riley can help deal with the horde, or you can head up to the top of the hill by yourself. It's safer at the top, or at least that's the current theory. Bottom of the hill. Colin Bailey, Benji, Brody, Church, Dante, Driver, Jamie, Jillian, Kelly, Lopez, Madison, Nathan, Nora, Parker, Rachel, Riley, Rosie, Tommy, Woody. Top of the hill. Colin no one. Games position, bottom of the hill. Help Nora up the hill. Radio button, check. One of six. Join the team of defenders as they kill zombies. Radio button, uncheck. Two of six. Help Nathan and Benji clear a path up the hill. Radio button, uncheck. Three of six. Move up the hill where it's safer. Radio button, uncheck. Four of six. Rally the survivors to kill the infected. Radio button, uncheck. Five of six. Set an explosive charge to detonate when the horde passes. Dim. Radio button. Uncheck. Si next. Button. I better help Nora up this hill. Set an explosive. Rally the survivors to kill the in. Move up the hill where it's safer. Help Nathan and Benji clear a path up the hill. Radio button. Join the team of defenders as they help Nora up the hill. Radio button. Check. One of six. Games position. Bottom of the hill. Help Nora up the hill. Radio button. Check. Join. Help. Move up. Rally the survive. Set an explosive. Next. Button. I know, you run to the side of the hill, where Nora is climbing along with Riley, who holds her arm to give support. Her cane catches a loose stone, and she falters but grabs a tree limb to keep from falling. Let me help, you say and hold her free arm. Nora, let me have your arm, I'll help you. The older woman gives you a half smile and focuses back on the uneven slope, taking careful steps forward. Thank you. Thank you, game, Riley says with a tall smile. Thank you, game. At times, the hill slopes at a higher angle, forcing Nora to put more weight on you and Riley. You struggle to keep yourself from faltering as you support the old woman. Before she puts each foot ahead, you kick away stones and feel for unseen obstacles that might endanger her movement. Behind you come constant snarls and gunfire, pushing the three of you farther up the path to what you only assume is safety past the edge of the hill. If I'd known we'd be hiking, I would have worn my boots. Nora lets out a short, tired chuckle, and though she tries to make light of the track, you see wear on her face and hear the tiredness in her voice. I'm not... <coughs> we would be hiking, I would have got my boots. Oh, 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 thank you, Riley. Thank you, game. You got it, Ma. Look, you're almost there. Riley says, his voice upbeat, right, showing Ma. sadness. You got it. You got it. You got. Look, look, look out! Look out! Look out! You got this. Go this way. Go this way. Lean, lean on game. I got your legs. Come on. You can do this, Ma. Oh, you're a good boy. You're such a good boy. And thank you, game. I know I'm close to the top, dummy. My eyes still work. Nora says through labored breaths. This gets a broad smile from Riley. I know you're all right if you're busting my cojones. Past the hill's midpoint, her legs quiver and arms shake as you hold her. Each careful footstep is harder than the next, and not until she nears the summit does she stop. Oh, oh, oh thank God. Help me sit, Nora says, and you and Riley lower her to a flat stone a foot off the ground. That's the most oh, exercise I've had since I streaked that stone's concert in 1993. Put me down over there. Ooh, I haven't moved this much in a long time. Once she sits, Riley takes out a pack of tissues from his back pocket and hands them to his mother. She takes one, reaches out, and squeezes Riley's hand with a weak smile. Thank you, boy. Thank you, game. You were a lifesaver. She dabs some sweat from her brow. Now, both of you get your asses out of here and help the others. You've spent enough time catering to an old lady. Don't worry about me. I'm okay now. Go help. Next. Button. Next. Button. Dante. More of the infected rush from the caravan, hitting the incline and starting up on their hands and feet. As they draw closer to the survivors, the undead reach out like hands from a grave. Some step on the bodies of fallen zombies to climb ahead, while the momentum of others propels them up the hill. The group at the bottom of the hill is forced backwards up the incline but remain in the lower section to keep the horde at bay. Die. Damn you. Die. Dante yells as he kicks a zombie's chest, knocking it down the hill. You can't touch me. You hear that? Stupid ass zombie. Out of ammo, Jamie shouts and slings his submachine gun over his shoulder. He steps beside a spruce, grabs a thick branch, and with two togs, tears it off the trunk. With one end on the ground, he steps in the middle to crack it into two pieces, the shorter one being spear-shaped in the length of his arm. Rachel tosses a handheld object over her shoulder like a football. It floats over the horde and lands far behind the caravan into a dense pack of infected. Lip grenade she shouts, and a moment later, an explosion rips through the pack of undead, sending up smoke and body parts in a flash of light and knocking down those nearby. Dante pauses while fighting and cocks his head towards Rachel. Damn, where'd she get a grenade? Nathan and Benji hack their way through the forest in a straight line towards the summit. Jillian uses their path, treading with slow, careful steps. Ahead of the group rises a sheer face of the hill, 10 to 20 degrees higher than the rest. Brody and Madison have reached it already, choosing to go ahead of the rest of the survivors. 
Tommy draws a knife and plunges it into the temple of an infective. A spear of blood paints his face, and as he looks at the dying dead woman, his expression changes to one of horror. Her hair is long and chestnut brown. Her lips are parted, showing blunted teeth turned into points, and her skin has turned yellow and decayed. The puncture wound oozes black and blood. So fixed and staring at the woman, he doesn't see the zombie coming from his left. You're higher on the hill than him, and if you yell a warning, he won't hear. If you don't save him, will he be the first to die on the hill? With the horde now rising up the hill, you need to decide what to do next. You could help defend the hill and thin the horde that still presents the largest threat you face to date. You could rally the survivors to fight, motivating them to defend the hill. Or if you fear the hill is lost, you could order a retreat and save as many as possible. Bottom of the hill. Colin Bailey, Benji, Brody, Church, Dante, Driver, Jamie, Jillian, Kelly, Lopez, Madison, Nathan, Parker, Rachel, Riley, Rosie, Tommy, Woody. Top of the hill. Colin Nora. Games position, middle of the hill. Join the team as they kill zombies. Radio button. Check. One of seven. I need to think about this. We need to get more people up the hill. Intercept the zombie before he blindsides Tommy. Radio button. Unchecked. We're definitely going to have to intercept this zombie. Kill a survivor. It's a good opportunity to get rid of someone. Radio button. Unchecked. Move up the hill. Radio button. Unchecked. Order the survivors to retreat up the hill. Radio button. Unchecked. Rally the survivors to kill the infected. Radio button. Unchecked. Time I rope to the top of the hill so others can use it to climb up. Radio button. Unchecked. Next. Button. Time I time I rally the rally the survivors. Order the survivors to retreat. Order the survivors to retreat. Move up the hill. Move up the hill. Ready? Kill a survivor. It's a good opportunity. Kill a survivor. It's a good opportunity. Intercept the zombie before he blindsides Tommy. I'm gonna intercept this zombie. Intercept the zombie before he blindsides Tommy. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of seven. Check. Kill a survivor. Move up the hill. Order the survivors to rally the survivors to time my rope to the top of the next button. Tommy holds his blank stare at the zombie woman on the ground before him, and the still living undead on his left dashes along the dirt hill towards him, weaving around shrubs and tree limbs. No other survivor sees the imminent threat to Tommy. So you use my sledgehammer. Radio button. Check. One of two. All right, time for thumper. Use my baseball bat. Radio button. Unchecked. And my two of two. baseball bat will be named Bambi. Next. Button. Use my bait. Next. Button. Next. Button. With the distance between you and the zombie, you have little time to reach the diseased man before he attacks Tommy. You raise your sledgehammer and follow his movement through the trees. Timing his approach. Judging his movement. He disappears behind a dark spruce, and you draw back your arm. With one smooth motion, you toss your weapon. It flips through the air, and over end in a flash of wood and metal and a whoosh of air. With a sudden hit, the weapon strikes the zombie's head, letting loose a spray of red and brown. The force carries him into a tree, and his body collapses to the ground. You run over and retrieve your weapon, noticing the open mouth of the infected, his teeth protracted and ready to bite before he met his final death. With a sudden shiver, Tommy breaks from his stupor. He glances at the dead zombie, then at you. T, thank you. Game. Oh, uh, where, where am I? It's okay, come on, let's go. You move closer to check if he's capable of continuing in the battle. He raises his carbine and fires a single shot into the zombie at his feet. The zombie heat stabbed moments ago that caused his days. I'm sorry, he says and walks towards the group defending the bottom of the hill. Let's go. Next. Button. Next. Button. You move closer to check if- Next. Button. Unchecked. The last of the infected flow out of the highway, undeterred by the dozens of corpses on the ground, the smell of death, the swarm of flies, and the beating sun. These aren't just campers and road workers. There are also police, aid workers, and the military, those called to defend the citizens of the outbreak. These are the defenders of those trying to survive, who gave their lives in their last call to duty. These are the heroes condemned to start their afterlife stuck in a mindless shell, forced to watch their hunger-driven violence. You look around the hill at your fellow survivors. The defenders have risen to the midpoint of the hill and form a new line from which to hold back the advancing horde. Nathan has cleared a path to the top, making it easier for all to climb. Benji is moving back down the hill to help the others still defending against the horde. You need to figure out what to do next. If you fight with the defenders, will you be able to kill the horde? What of the pack rushing the defenders from their blind side? Diverting some survivors will stop the surprise attack, but it also might weaken the main defense. Can you defeat the pack yourself instead? Detonate the explosive charge down the hill. Dim. Radio button. Unchecked. One of six. Fight against the horde with the rest of the defenders. Radio button. Check. Two of six. Kill a survivor. It's a good opportunity to get rid of someone. Radio button. Unchecked. Three of... Rest for a few minutes. Radio button. Unchecked. Four of six. Snipe the infected from the top of the hill. Dim. Radio button. Unchecked. Five of time I rope to the top of the hill so others can use it to climb up. Radio button. Unchecked. Six of six. Next. Button. I could tie a rope or I just could help fight. I think it's better to fight. Fight them now while we can. Next. Button. Time I rope to time. Snipe. Snipe the infected from the rest for a few minutes. Rest for a few minutes. Kill a survivor. It's a good opportunity. Kill a survivor. It's a good fight against the horde with the rest of the defenders. Fight against the horde with the rest of the defenders. Radio button. Check. Two. Kill it. Rest. Time. Next. Next. Button. Let's just fight together. Time I Next. Button. Time I Next. Button. You draw your. Sledgehammer. Radio button. Check. One of two. Bambi. You hold on. It's time for Thumper. Baseball bat. Radio button. Next. Button. Next. Button. Your group continues up the side of the hill, and you take your pick and prepare to fight the closest of the living dead. A pack of infected charge over a crest on the side of the hill, running straight your way like they knew your position. You cut along the hillside, running through the trees and maneuvering to separate the pack. It works, and instead of one group of six, they chase in pairs ten feet apart. Near a patch of square rocks, you dig your feet into the dirt and raise your sledgehammer. The first pair lunges for you, one falls to a quick strike, the other gets caught on a rock and tumbles to the earth. <coughs> moment, you drop the flat edge and crack his skull. The next pair are already upon you, splitting around the stones. You swing in a wide arc, bashing the one on the right, <coughs> spin, and slam the other's cranium, which caves in. <coughs> Oh. <laughs>
As the others draw closer, you hop onto the highest stone and kick one of the zombies in the face, tumbling into a dry bush. The other reaches for your left leg, but you break her arm with a quick strike. Leaping off the stone, you swing and end her on life. The last one staggers from the bush, still punctured by thorns and tangled in the brush, and you send him to his final rest. Long, desperate minutes have passed for the group of survivors on a hill over a highway somewhere on the outskirts of nightfall. Colorado. More dead than undead climb the hillside, like soldiers climbing over a death pile on the battlefield. Only a few remain to kill, and the threat is all but over, except for the threat of disease among the hundreds of dead on the hill, the highway, and the field. Jillian, Parker, and Kelly reach the top with Nathan, and the four create a human chain up the steepest part of the hill to help the other survivors clear the summit. A collective calm comes over the survivors, and the many faces show a myriad of other emotions, happiness, confidence, even cockiness as they survey the many corpses before them. Madison stops shooting and hugs Nora on the summit, while Kelly, Woody, Riley, Brody, Gina, and others share handshakes and pats on the back. We did it. Game. Jamie says and lifts you with a hug. I can't believe it, but we made it. Game, you did it! We made it! Next. Button. Next. Button. Next chapter. Next chapter. Button. The top of the summit. Show stats. Button. The top of the summit leads to a- You stand high on a flat stone rock and call out. The top of the summit leads to a wide clearing. Show stats. Button. The top of the summit leads to a wide clearing, where your group holds as the zombies continue their climb, only to fall at the peak of the incline. They have no way to reach you, making this the safest spot you've been for a while. Past the clearing lies a dense forest, though you can only imagine what dangers lurk in those woods. You stand high on a flat stone rock and call out to the survivors. Everyone, be careful. We still have living dead coming up the hill. Be alert. We are not out of danger yet. Everybody, be careful. We don't know how many more are down there. We need to watch. Keep a perimeter. Conserve ammo. Melee team. Take them out if you can, but if you're not sure you can, let those with short range take them out. Those of you with rifle rounds, keep an eye on everybody. Overwatch, please. No, no heavy weaponry use right now. We need to conserve that for whatever else comes along. As you look over the small Colorado hill and the last of the zombie horde writhing among their dead, you can't help but wonder where they all came from. Did they leave their homes in one communal calling and move together to scour the earth for the living? Or is it just nature, a relocation of sorts from an area where the living have been purged, so the dead search for a more suitable area to find vessels for the virus? Next chapter. Button. Next chapter. As you look over the small Colorado hill and the last of the- Next chapter. Next chapter. Button. You check. Chapter 6. Where do we go from here? Image. Chapter 6. You sit on a rocket off the Colorado hillside. Chapter- Show stats. Bu zombie exodus. Show stats. Chapter 6. Where do we go from here? Image. You sit on a rocket off the Colorado hillside, the sun in a sky of deep blue shining down on your face. Clouds are rolling in from the west, dark and heavy with rain. Beneath you lie hundreds of corpses, now festering under the glow of the same sun. Nearby are the survivors, Bailey, Benji, Brody, Church, Dante, Driver, Gina, Jillian, Lopez, Kelly, Madison, Nathan, Nora, Parker, Rachel, Riley, Rosie, Tommy, Woody, and Jamie. They look beaten and nearly broken, and if you hadn't been with them the whole time, you'd never believe they survived the battle with the undead. Above them all looms the apocalypse, now in its third day with no end in sight. You check your watch. It's already 3.15 p.m. The past hours have been a blur. Though your leader, you discussed your plan to set up camp, which led to your fellow survivors eliminating the remaining infected, gathering supplies from the caravan, and bringing all that's needed for at least a day up to the clearing. Supervising from the summit was a nerve-wracking hour as you worried someone would forget to take the correct equipment, including the rest of your gear. The survivors worked hard, and by the end, all of the group's resources made it up to the clearing. Everyone carried out your plan without objection, allowing you to relax a bit as they worked. Having won the battle on the hill, you and the other survivors performed your tasks with confidence. Though tired and hungry, you all seemed renewed by the fight. The challenge against you was impossible, yet somehow you beat the odds and survived. As Riley passes you on his way down the hill, he pauses. Hey, thanks for what you did, for my ma. You earned big points with me. Thanks, game. Thank you for saving my mother. I got your back. I'll tell you that from right now, from... to whenever. Thanks, Riley. Appreciate that. I would have done it for any of us, though. I hope he would do the same for me. I don't know. I don't know if I would have. But you're making me think that maybe we need to work together. But again, I want to say thank you for saving my mom. No problem. He walks on, not even giving you a chance to reply. Your mind drifts to thoughts of the survivors. You've known Jamie for a long time. Same with Tommy, but most of the others you've only known for a short time. If you're developing feelings for them, how can you be sure they like you back? Has your relationship grown in these short days? I find myself mainly attracted to Billy. Radio button. Check. One of six. I find myself mainly attracted to Gina. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of six. I find myself mainly attracted to Jillian. Radio button. Uncheck. Three of six. I find myself mainly attracted to Kelly. Radio button. Uncheck. Four of six. I find myself mainly attracted to Rachel. Radio button. Uncheck. Five of six. I'm not interested in anyone. Radio button. Uncheck. Six of six. I don't really find anybody here. My type. I need to stay focused. I'm not attracted to anyone, really. They're all good people. We're family. We don't have time for entanglements. I find my... I'm not interested in anyone. Radio button. Uncheck. Six of six. Check. Next. Button. Next. Button. Jamie takes a spot next to you on the white rock. He rubs his face with his hands, digging the palms into his eyes like he's wiping away the tiredness. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. God, I'm tired. 
Hang on there. We're going to make it. We're going to do it. Take this moment. Rest. Drink water. You hydrated? Oh, man, a little bit. Man, that was rough. Man, the stench from these things. Yeah, we need to find a way to deal with this. We don't know what diseases these things are putting off. Yeah, probably is a lot of disease, but first diseases we need to avoid is death. Yeah, I hear you. You okay? Yeah, I'm right, I'm right. Just tired. Running low on ammo. We don't have a lot of food either. We can't stay here forever, game. We need to figure out a plan. Yeah, I know. But for now, we're safe and no one died. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I agree with you. Hey, game. From behind, Rachel's voice calls from a short distance. She went scouting an hour ago past the clearing on the summit, while others from your group finished moving supplies up the hill. The clearing is ready to make camp. Should I gather everyone and move them to there? Game, should we set up camp? We're clear. Sure, let's go. Next, button. Yeah, let's do it. Next, button. You follow Rachel 50 yards back from the summit of the hill. A short stretch of hard rock and dirt leads from the ledge to an open meadow of grass and numerous wild flowers. In the short walk, you spot white thistle flowers that resemble upside down spiders with spindly legs, red and orange trumpet horns, and even edible desert paintbrush flowers. The breeze picks up and carries the strong scent of pine, but in harder gusts, the odor of death and decay rises off the hill. When you reach the woodlands, you enter the dense forest and weave through the low branches and pine needles, your feet breaking twigs and pine cones on the undisturbed earth and floor. No humans have come by this way in a number of seasons, and the critters and insects scurry as you disturb their domain. The high tremolo of blue jays and sparrows adds music to the background. Another 20 yards and you see a massive circular clearing. Its borders dark brown and clearly separated from the flora. Like the grove has avoided growth over a cursed plot of land. It's flat and round and hidden. And the only footprints here were made by your team scout. Deer tracks dot the area. And you notice damp areas of ground where animals have marked their territory. Likely larger rodents or foxes. The breeze dies out once you step into the circle. As the knitted trees provide walls to the clearing that keep out the flow of wind. The remaining survivors arrive in turn, each finding a small plot of land where they can sit and rest. Nora unfolds a beach chair in the shaded canopy of branches, and Riley sits next to her on the dirt. He fixes her pant leg, which has risen from the walk, and she pats his back. Kelly sits with Parker, the pair comforting one another against the trunk of an old tree. Rosie lies on her side in the dirt, her chest rising and falling in sleep. Driver sits by her side, caressing her hair in a loving, brotherly way. As you stare around the clearing, Gina approaches. Do you have a moment? I would like a word with you, she says and walks past you to sit by a shaded area. She picks up a twig and sketches out doodles with it in the dirt. We haven't been formally introduced. I'm Gina Nixon. Gabe, may I speak with you for a minute? Uh, yeah, Gina, right? Yes, yes, that's my name. Please. Yeah, l let's talk. Oh. I'm Game King, you say. She gives you a firm handshake. This may sound crazy, but I'm glad I spotted you all on the highway. Roads are closing everywhere. Nightfall is getting overrun by the infected, and I'm trying to get to a safe place until well. I guess to start over. Were you all trying to leave Colorado together? Were you all here from Colorado? Yeah, most of us. Where'd you come from? I was trying to get off the highway. That's all I was really trying to do. Something like that, you say, trying to be evasive. Reason I stopped over is to say, first, I really appreciate how everyone fought on that hill. You all came together as a group. It's rare to see that level of teamwork. I don't think things are going to go back to normal anytime soon, which leads me to my second point. Can I tag along? There's nothing left for me in Nightfall. I'm an engineer, so I'm sure I can help you wherever your group lands. Game, where I'm from, I worked as an engineer. I don't know if that's much use to your team, but I'd love to come with you if that's okay. Do you all need to vote on that? You glance down and notice a sizable diamond ring on her finger. Sure, we'd love to have you with us. Radio button, check, one of seven. You can join us. We need to keep all survivors we meet alive, and she's safer with us than out there alone. Radio button, unchecked, two of seven. Of course you can join. I look forward to getting to know you, I say in a flirtatious way. Radio button, unchecked, three of seven. Sure, you can hang with us. Gina has proved to be a capable fighter, and we could use her. Radio button, unchecked, four of seven. Sure, you can join, as long as you give me that ring on your finger. Radio button, unchecked, five of seven. As long as you contribute and follow my lead. Radio button, unchecked, six of seven. We're not taking in new people. Radio button, unchecked, seven of seven. Well, I think the best plan is to add her to our team. She seems capable. As long as, as long, sure, 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 sure. Of course you can join, of course you can join, you can join us. You can join us. Sure, we'd love to have you, sure. We'd love to have, you glance down and notice a sizable diamond ring. Reason I stopped over, you glance, sure. We'd love to have you with us. Radio button, check, one of seven. Gina, you can join us. You're welcome. You can join, of course, sure, sure. As long as we're not take, next, next, button. A smile blossoms on Gina's face. Thank you so much. These last few days have been really rough and knowing I have a group to join is the start of something good in my life. Maybe the stars finally align and my luck is changing. Next, button. Thank you, game. I appreciate that. Maybe my life is gonna go better now. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, button. Woody, as everyone finds a spot in the 40-yard wide clearing, you step into the center to address them. Everyone, get over here and sit so we can discuss a few things. You say, I'll try not to waste too much time. Everybody come over here. We need to talk. 
Woody stands off to the side of the circle, arms folded, eyelids drooping. Church stands leaning against an old tree, wiping sweat from his brow with a checkered pocket square. Gina looks for a clear spot to sit, and Jillian waves her over. She spreads out an oversized shirt on a rare patch of grass, and Gina joins her on it. Riley and Nora remain seated together. Tommy, Dante, Madison, and Brody are last to enter the clearing, having spent the most effort dealing with the last of the infected horde. With the entire group present, you provide a straightforward, detailed plan for survival. Radio button, check. One of four. Congratulate everyone on surviving the battle and working together. Radio button, uncheck. Two of four. Explain that I require order and discipline if the group hopes to survive. Radio button, uncheck. Three of four. So. Congratulate. Provide a straightforward, detailed plan for survival. Radio button, check. One of four. Should I lay out my plan to them already? They look a little tired. A little worse to wear. Congratulate everyone on surviving the battle and working together. Radio button, uncheck. Two of four. I don't want to brown nose anybody, but... I could compliment them for what they did. They deserve some credit. That was a lot. Explain that I require order and discipline if the group hopes to survive. Radio button. Uncheck. Three of four. I don't want to be hard. Might be too soon. Maybe when the time comes, I can be hard. But right now, they've been through a lot. Offer a simple plan. Focused on providing basic needs. I want to lift spirits. Not be a dictator. Radio button. Uncheck. Four of four. I need to get them to stay together. I don't want to be too harsh. Next. Button. But we need to have some discipline. I think we'll have to keep everything real tight here for now. Maybe later we can relax a little bit. Next. Offer us ex provide with the entire group present. You provide a straightforward. Congratulate everyone on surviving the battle and working together. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of four. Let's congratulate them. Check. I need to keep them all encouraged. They've been through a lot. Explain that. Offer a simple pl Next. Button. Next. Button. So, you stand before the semicircle of survivors and project your voice with confidence. I only want to speak for a few minutes to say how proud I am of this group. I'm truly impressed with how well we all fought and supported one another. The odds were against us. Hundreds of infected came at us, but we stood up to them, came together as a team. I am honored to be your leader and confident we'll survive this outbreak together. Now, let's make some food, set up our camp, and get some rest. Your words are met with light applause and other forms of congratulations among the survivors. Just as the semicircle breaks, Jamie walks up to you, yawning and stretching his back. Hey, good speech. Yeah, game. Nice speech. Ooh, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, I can see it really kept you awake. Yeah, you look like you were so excited by it. No, sorry. I wasn't yawning because of you talking. I don't even remember what sleep is like. Man, I haven't slept in three days. You don't even understand how tired I am. I think we're all tired, Jamie. Rachel joins the two of you. Well, Jamie, right after you eat, you should nap for a few hours. Jamie, you need to get some rest. Let's eat and then you sleep. Maybe. We'll see. He looks at the dirt floor of the clearing, and you can see his mind working over all of the things that need to be done. Yeah, we have so much to do. I don't know, Rachel. I don't know, game. We need to do some assignment here to watch. Cannot let our guard down for a second. Well, you're going to let your guard down if you don't get any rest. I agree with Rachel, Jamie. You need to get some rest. We all do. We're going to live. So, game, whilst I have you aside from the group, I thought it would be wise for us to pick a person to act as a quartermaster of sorts, one who can inventory and track our supplies, not to play favorites, but I thought one of your group could do so. Who do you have in mind, you ask? Parker, perhaps? He worked as a museum curator and might be more suited to cataloging weapons than firing them. To put it nicely, Jamie adds. I agree, at least he'll be useful for something, you say. Then there's Nora, she wants to help but has limitations. This gives her a charge, and her motherly disposition suits her to the task. Jamie smirks. I sure wouldn't cross her. Rachel nods her head towards the side of the clearing. Kelly might be a proper choice. She's a bit troubled over not winning the leadership vote, and this helps to show her she's a vital member. So what do you think, game? Jamie asks. You can't do everything yourself, so you better start delegating. Yeah, we need to delegate. We do need a quartermaster. You choose. Parker, radio button, check. One of three. Kelly, radio button, uncheck. Two of three. Nora, radio button, uncheck. Three of three. Next, button. Nora, Ra Kelly, radio button, Parker, radio button, check, one of three. I'm not sure if I want to give Kelly all the control of the weapons, though I don't want her getting any hurt feelings and taking off on us. I'd love to give Nora the job, but that's a lot of responsibility for her. Maybe she should just stay out of it for now and rest a little bit. Parker seems like he knows what he's doing, but I don't know him that well. Kelly, radio button, uncheck, two of three. Parker, radio button, check, one of three. Kelly needs something to do. Let's 
Let's give Kelly the job. Kelly, radio button. Uncheck. Two of three. Check. Nora, radio button. Next. Button. Kelly, Kelly is the best choice. Let's go tell her. The three of you walk to the side of the clearing, where Parker and Kelly are setting up blankets in the crook of several spruce trees. As you step closer, Kelly stands and turns to face you. Her clothes are dirty and tattered. She's barefoot with her sneakers on the side of the blankets, and her complexion is even more pale. Hey guys, just trying to set up a small area to nap. What's going on? We need someone to handle all of our inventory, keeping track of our supplies, telling us when we're running low on things and who's taking various items. You say, we thought you might be good for the job. Kelly perks up at the words. Oh, yeah, I hadn't even thought about who's going to handle and track all of our supplies. It makes total sense that one person should be a gatekeeper. Is it a group consensus to pick me? We discussed it before we came over, and all of us knew this was an important responsibility. It couldn't be just anyone. We all thought of you, Rachel says, her voice even and reassuring. Jamie folds his arms over his chest. No one else would do a better job. Kelly smiles, and a tinge of red returns to her cheeks. I'm flattered you all put faith in me. I'd be happy to do it. Thanks, Kelly, you say. Now that we're set on someone to manage supplies, let's pull our respective inventories and prepare food for everyone. As the matter of quartermaster is finished, Jamie steps up to you. Hey, I figured you'd want to check out our food supply. When you're done, let me know so I can cook something up. I got an idea for apocalypse stew I want to try out. Next, button. Next, button. None of my While the rest of the group settles into the clearing and Jamie and Rachel prepare a large campfire, you gather all of the food and water from the various backpacks and from asking fellow survivors to donate what they can spare. Rachel and her group donate the most food, 400 portions, while Parker hands over a healthy amount of 40 portions. You tally the rest. Jamie contributed 50 portions. Nora and Riley handed over 60 portions. Church, 20 portions. Dante, 20 portions. Gina, 40 portions. Lopez, 10 portions. Tommy, 30 portions. Totaling all contributions equals 670 food and 370 water. Looking at your personal supply of 50 food and 55 water, you contribute. All of my food and water to the group's inventory. It's only fair. Radio button. Check. One of five. Most of my food. I hold back one day. Half my food and water. I don't trust this group enough to give more. Ra none of my food and water. I need to worry about my own survival. Radio I'll button. Give all Uncheck. my food. Four of five. This team needs to stay alive. None of my food and water. Next. Button. Next. Button. You contribute 50 food and 55 water, making the group total 720 food and 425 water. Jamie and Rachel stand over a campfire, thin gray smoke rising above it, crackling logs hiss and pop, and Brody tosses in a long branch, which flares as it meets the flames. At the edge of the clearing, survivors have lined the ground with their makeshift bedding, sleeping bags, and a single four-person, dome-shaped tent for Rachel's crew. While you're finishing the cataloging of the food and drink, Riley steps towards you, hands in the pockets of his jeans and glancing back and forth over his shoulders, sheepish in his approach. Hey, game, how you doing? He says and rubs the back of his neck. Game? How you doing, man? How you feeling? As good as can be expected. What's up with you? I'm good. How are you? Riley crouches next to you. So here's the thing. A few years ago, I got mixed up into some things and spent some time in Englewood, the federal prison in Jefferson County. It was a crap charge. Total misunderstanding. While I was there, I had kitchen duty for a while as a line cook. If you needed someone to feed these people, I'd be happy to do it. Believe it or not, cooking is one of my passions. And he looks over his shoulder. With no one around, he turns back to you. I don't know if you realize it, but yesterday was Mother's Day. I was hoping to put something special together for my ma. Nothing fancy, but maybe a cupcake or a treat of some kind. So what do you say? Need a cook? Yeah, Riley, y you cooked? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was in prison for a while and learned how to do it really good. I'd love to do something nice for my mom. It was Mother's Day yesterday. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Based on what Riley has described as his cooking experience and training, you're guessing that Riley is a better cook than you. Also, he would truly appreciate the opportunity to cook for the group. Jamie is already assuming he'll be cooking tonight's meal and might be upset if he's not allowed to do it. You've never known him to be a great cook, but maybe he's gotten more practice at his recent job. Sure, Riley, you can cook. Radio button, check. One of six. Jamie asked to be cook. Let's discuss it with him. If he's okay with you taking over, then I have no problem with it. Radio button, uncheck. Two of six. Let's go talk to Jamie. He was gonna cook, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind letting you do it. Jamie asked to be cook. It's best to let him do it, but you can prepare something for your mother. Radio button, uncheck. Jamie asked to be cook, so it's best to let him do it. Unfortunately, we can't afford the luxury of treats right now. Radio button, uncheck. Four of, I'm planning on cooking, but you can prepare something for your mother. Radio button, uncheck. Five of six. I'm planning on cooking, and we can't afford the luxury of treats right now. Rate next button. I'm plan I'm pl I'm pl I'm planning Jamie asked to be cook. So Jamie asked to be cook. So Jamie asked to be cook. It's best to let him do it. But Jamie asked to be cook. It's best to let him do it. But Jamie asked to be cook. Let's discuss it with him. If he's okay with you taking over, then I have no problem with it. Jamie asked to be cook. It's best to let him do it. But you Jamie sure, sure. Riley, you can cook. Jamie asked to be cook. Let's discuss it with him. If he's okay with you taking over, then I have no problem with it. Radio button. Jamie asked Jamie asked to be cook. Let's discuss it with him. If he's okay with you taking over, then I have no problem with it. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of six. Check. Jamie, Jamie, I'm planning on cooking. I'm planning on cooking. Next. Button. I don't. Riley's forehead creases. Then his eyes widen. Oh, sure. No problem. Let's get the big guy over here. He turns and cups his hands around his mouth. Yo, Jamie, one sec. Jamie drops a log onto the roaring fire and strides over. What's up? Before you can answer, Riley speaks up. Game said you wanted to cook for the group. But to be honest, I was hoping to do it. I got some training. I don't have a problem with that. Jamie says, if you want the job, Riley, I'm happy to hand over the chef's hat. I'll go finish getting the fire where it needs to be. Come on over when you're ready to start. 
Jamie heads off to the campfire, and Riley claps his hands together in excitement. Yes, I got this. Game. Trust me, these people won't know what hit them. I'll knock their taste buds into next week. Thinking about why you agreed to Riley's request, you did it because... I want to utilize his talent for cooking. Radio button. Check. One of five. It's nice of him to make a gift for his mother. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of five. I do want him to take care of his mother. And he's also got cooking skills. He'll owe me. Radio button. Uncheck. Three of five. I don't want him to think he owes me anything. I don't care who cooks, so why not let him? Radio button. Uncheck. Four of five. I do care who cooks. I like him and want to do something so he likes me back. Radio button. Uncheck. Five of five. I also do need to build rapport among these people. Let's just keep it professional. He can cook. Let's put the best person for the job to work. Next. Button. You seem qualified for the job, so I'm glad you asked to cook. Riley shrugs. Thanks for giving me the chance to do it. I never set out to be a cook. After high school, I figured I'd be an auto mechanic, union laborer, loan shark, you know, some kind of legit blue-collar work. Cooking fell into my lap. The head cook was this big Italian guy, Johnny Filet. He took me under his wing and taught me all about it. Why they call him Johnny Filet? Did he cook a lot of meat? Nah, he used to cut people with a fillet knife, Riley says, waving his hand like he's shooing the question away. Anyway, after six months of training, I was basically running the kitchen. I did it for a year, and other than cooking for myself or Ma, I never thought I'd be cooking for other people again. At least there's that to look forward to. Well, I talked your ear off enough. Thanks, game. Thank you, game. I'll do a good job. Go for it, Riley. I believe in you. Riley stands and trots towards the campfire. Next, button. Next, button. Uncheck. Everyone gets a small amount, just enough to survive. You spend half an hour separating the food. Show stats. Button. You spend half an hour separating the food and figuring out how much can be used for a meal today versus saved for future consumption. Without a way to predict the timing of an end to the outbreak, you have no way of knowing when more food will become available through normal means. There's no going to a store, and you don't know if aid is available from emergency services. The food and water in front of you may need to last a while. You look around the camp at the other survivors. Many are sitting on blankets on the ground, trying to rest for the first time in many hours. Those who are working to set up camp are sluggish and weak, milling about as if imitating the languid walk of the infected. Giving them a hearty meal would replenish their bodies and spirits, making them more capable of surviving the day ahead. How much can you spare? Should you conserve now and proportion out future meals, or give the group a feast and risk leaner meals in the days ahead? Let's feast. We need to fuel our bodies, and a bountiful meal will lift morale. Radio button. Check. One of five. Maybe we should eat a little bit more right now. Replenish our energy after that huge fight. We can spare a normal meal for now. No more. No less. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of five. I think a normal meal could also be a little bit more conservative. Let our bodies get lean and stronger. Though, I don't want anybody hungry. Everyone gets a small amount, just enough to survive. We need to conserve. Radio button. Uncheck. Three of five. Or should we go really hardcore? And really conserve our food and ration it out. We'll make a small meal for the group, but my closest allies will secretly receive extra. Radio button. Unchecked. Four of five. There's going to be no favoritism in this group. I discuss it with the entire group and hold a vote. We're all in this together. Radio button. Unchecked. Five of five. There's no need to add any unnecessary politics. Next. Button. I just got, I just, we'll make, we'll make us, everyone gets a small, everyone gets a small amount, just, we can spare a normal meal, we can spare a normal meal for now, no more, no less, Re everyone gets a small amount, just enough, we can, let's feast, we need to fuel our bodies, and a bountiful meal will lift morale, we can spare a normal meal for now, no more, no less, radio button, unchecked, two of five, check, we're gonna have a normal meal, I think that's good enough, everyone, get, we'll make, I discuss it with the, next, button, next, you separate out the food and bring enough for the meal to the campfire, Oh good, you can put the food right here on the blanket. I made a space for it, Jamie says, pointing to a small stretch of plastic near the edge of the fire. Since Riley is cooking, I'll go rest for a bit. Tell him to grab me if he needs any help. He wipes ash from his hands on a rag hanging from his belt and walks off. So what do we got here? Riley strides up from behind, looking the part. He wears a skull and crossbones bandana over his hair and a long white scrap of linen down his pants like an apron. He bends to look at the food items on the plastic mat. Not too shabby, some meat, some vegetables, starch. I'm thinking a chicken and pasta stew would do the trick. Ever hear of mulligatawny? People think it's Indian because of the curry, but it originated in England and Ireland. Granted, we probably stole the idea, just like we did everything else, but it's hearty and sticks to your ribs, and that's what these people need. And I guess I'll do something without meat, too. Believe it or not, Dante's a vegetarian. I don't completely understand the decision to give up meat, but I don't understand a lot of things, either. Anyway, I better get cooking. Next, button. Next, button. The clearing on the Colorado hillock has become a safe haven of sorts, set back in a clearing of the forest. No one can see your group from the highway below. In the small clearing, tents and blankets line the outer part of the circle, and the survivors take spots as food is passed from pot to person, filling bowls, empty Tupperware, and any other containers ground for use. Staring at your bowl, you fully expect that future meals won't even be this plentiful. Haven't you suffered enough? Next. Button. Next. Button. Uncheck. With the meal prepared and ready to be served, you look around. Show stats. Button. With the meal prepared and ready to be served, you look around the clearing. While everyone eats, you look for a place to sit or someone to join. Everyone's eating so fast, you might only have time for one quick check-in. There will be time for more in-depth talks later. You sit with Bailey. Radio button. Check. One of fifteen. I could sit with Bailey. Benji and Nathan. Radio button. Uncheck. Two of fifteen. I could sit with Benji and Nathan. Brody and Madison. Radio button. Uncheck. Three of fifteen. Or I could sit with Brody and Madison. Church. Radio button. Uncheck. Four of fifteen. I could sit with church. Dante, radio button, unchecked, 5 of 15. Sit with Dante. 
Driver and Rosie. Radio button. Unchecked. Or Driver and Rosie, the brother and sister. Gina. Radio button. Unchecked. 7 of 15. Our new friend, Gina. Jamie and Woody. Radio button. Unchecked. 8 of 15. Or Jamie and Woody. Jillian. Radio button. Unchecked. 9 of 15. I can sit with Jillian. Kelly and Parker. Radio button. Unchecked. 10 of 15. Or Kelly and Parker. Lopez. Radio button. Unchecked. 11 of 15. Don't know Lopez that well. I can sit with him. Nora and Riley. Radio button. Unchecked. 12 of 15. I can sit with Nora and Riley. Rachel. Radio button. Unchecked. 13 of 15. Or hang out with Rachel. Tommy. Radio button. Unchecked. 14 of 15. Tommy. No one. I sit by myself. Radio button. Unchecked. 15 of 15. Maybe it's not good to pick and choose anybody right now. Maybe I should just keep to myself. It's lonely being a leader, but I don't want to think anybody... I don't want anybody to think that I'm picking someone that's a favorite. So, we'll just sit by myself. Next. No one. I sit by myself. No one. I sit by myself. Radio button. Uncheck. 15 of 15. Check. Next. Button. Next. You sit on a spare blanket a few yards from the campfire, enjoying your own meal while looking around camp at the other survivors. They eat their meal with greedy abandon, foregoing any degree of etiquette or reserve. Hands are used instead of utensils. Tongues lap at the lukewarm liquid, and soup is drunk from tilted bowls. Church walks over to Parker's blanket, and they kneel together in silence. Heads bowed and hands pressed together in a sign of prayer. After a few moments, Parker makes the sign of the cross, and Church walks back to his camp spot. Driver finishes his food in seconds and looks around erratically, like a mud searching for the next morsel. Seeing this, Rosie strokes his back and then scoops some of her own meal into his bowl. Gina might be the only person whose content, a slight grin never leaves her face as she glances around camp at all the survivors. Next. Button. I, with the meal over, clean up begins. Without a sink to rinse out bowls and containers, your companions use a sparse amount of bottled water to clean them or simply wipe them out with paper towels. Riley steps before the fire, puts his fingers in his mouth, and blasts a loud whistle. All right, everyone get your asses over here. I got something special for dessert. The survivors stop their cleanup and congregate near the campfire, surprised expressions on their tired faces. Nora is last to make it, and the group makes a path for her to reach the front of the fire closest to Riley. After she stops near the roaring flames, the rest of the survivors form a semicircle around the bonfire. Riley raises his hands, and the group quiets. I appreciate you all coming over here, he says. He pauses and looks at his mother, tears forming in his eyes, which he quickly wipes away. Look, I'm no talker. My mother means the world to me. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and this lady has always been the best mom punk like me could ask for. Happy Mother's Day, Ma. Love ya. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Ah, come here, you hot dog. Nora says and opens her arms for her son. He hugs her, and she strokes his hair and plants a kiss on his cheek. Come here, boy. You're so sweet. I love you, too. Thank you. The group watches on as the mother and son embrace, all in silence with only the sides of the mountain wind and crackling fire to be heard. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, wherever you are, Brody says. He takes Madison's hand, and she lays her head on his shoulder. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you're still alive somewhere out there. Parker stands. Happy Mother's Day, Ju, and to Daniel, I love you, Dad. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, Jamie says next. I know you're out there, probably saving other people. Woody steps beside Jamie, his chest puffed out with pride. To Aunt Sela and to my Ma, no two finer ladies EVR out there, he says and raises a mug. I'd like to send my love to the best parents in the world, Nathan says. Their names are Claire and Mustafa. Love you, Mom and Gran, Benji says. Soft, squeaking sobs come from behind the row of survivors, and you spot Bailey with her arm across her face. Kelly steps in and wraps her arms around the young woman, and the two sit on the ground, rocking in place. My mother wasn't a God-fearing woman, believe it or not. Church says as he stands up, a white-brimmed Panama hat in his hand, but she raised me right, worked two jobs to put me through divinity school, and died of a heart attack still working at 91. Happy Mother's Day to you, he points to the sky. Dante stands next and kisses his gold chain. Hope you run in things up there, Mama Dethro. Gina stays seated but lifts her cup. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, and to Michael, I love you and miss you. Her voice breaks at the end. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, Jillian says, her voice level and unemotional. Next. Button. Tommy, everyone stands around the campfire, silent in a brief pause from expressing their Mother's Day wishes. Finally, Rachel raises her mug next. My mother is a wonderful woman. She's a head librarian in London. At least, I hope she still is. Rachel breaks and looks at the ground. When life was particularly challenging, she would remind me of the story of the elephant and the hummingbird. One day, an elephant came upon a hummingbird lying on its back on the branch of a tall tree, its tiny feet in the air. What are you doing? The elephant asked. The hummingbird replied, I heard that the sky might fall today, and so I'm ready to help hold it up, should it fall. The elephant snorted a cruel laugh. Do you really think those tiny feet could help hold up the sky? Apostrophe. The hummingbird kept his feet up in the air, intent on his purpose. Not alone, but each must do a part, and this is what I can do. The campfire flares, and Riley moves to check it. He pushes some of the logs apart, and the fire stops smoking. Tommy sits and buries his head in his hands. Lopez walks over and sits next to him with his hand on Tommy's back. Well, my mother had me locked up in an asylum, Rosie says, her tone cavalier, like she's ordering a pizza. I guess she did the right thing. I was a regular pain in the ass. Still am. But what the hell? Happy Mother's Day, Deborah. If I could do it over, I'd be the gal you wanted. Driver stares at her as she speaks, and when she's finished, he wraps his arms around her body and squeezes. Okay, you big goof, let me go before you give me scoliosis. Rosie smiles as she winces while driver sways her in the hog. With the group finishing their toasts and expressions of remembrance, you. Say, happy Mother's Day, Mom, I miss her. Radio button, check, one of four. 
I should probably wish my own mother happy Mother's Day. Say, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Radio button, unchecked, two of four. Or I could wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day. Say nothing, I don't care to celebrate. Radio button, unchecked, three of four. I could say nothing at all. Say nothing, this is a waste of time. We should focus on survival. Radio button, unchecked, four of four. I could get more serious about what we're doing here. Next, button. I think I'll just say happy to all mothers. Say not, say not, say, say, happy Mother's Day, mom, I miss her. With the group finishing their toast and say, happy Mother's Day, mom, I miss her. Say, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Radio button, unchecked, two of four. Let's Check. just say happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Say not, say not, next, next, button, next. The group answers your words with a drink from their cups. Here, here. With dinner finished, Riley brings a tray of marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers to the fire. Hey everyone, time for some s'mores. Looks like everything's going better. That's it, folks. We're going to wrap it up right here for now. We'll come back again with our next episode of Zombie Exodus Safe Haven, Episode 5. For now, thank you very much for joining us, and I'll hear you soon. Take care.